Hello, 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 what's up guys in another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be hitting 3500 medals using the probably one of the most old school decks in the game, which is Viking Bridgestone. This deck is, well, self-explanatory. You just play cards at the bridge, force out mistakes of your opponent and win games. So, as a support card, which may vary, I've picked Devs, which are very solid anti-air and Piercing Archer, which basically gives us a free bridge battle every time we engage it. So, without further ado, uh -oh, also, there's a Flying Bomb instead of Poison, because Poison is too slow for this deck, it, at least in my opinion. There are people that play this with Poison, but I prefer Flying Bomb for this instantaneous hit. So, without further ado, let's jump to a game number one and show some dominance. And here we are with, in the game number one against Andrea. So, he has a 10 metal, so we're gonna see what is he playing. Starting off, obviously, with a steel hammer. So, if I were to guess a deck, it probably would have been a default deck. N no shenanigans, just... Totally classics. However, he's already displaying a piercing archer, which is deviation from a default deck. So we'll have to find out what exactly is he playing. And right now he's gonna get some chip with piercing archer. We don't really care that much since our attacks obviously are way more scary than uh, his attacks. So I'm gonna play twins just in just enough late so they won't be in the back for as long as possible and will cross the bridge as soon as piercing archer does and also our opponent will play defensive symmetry which declares some some things that we can already process i for instance can play viking at the bridge because even if he has a mana advantage if he doesn't have a win condition on his hand he cannot punish us for this greedy play. Also, he won't be having many uh, responses against our Vikings, so playing it in the back is probably the best way of converting this position. Obviously, we're gonna have a blitz for the Skeleton Horde, and the tower is down. We won't be getting a 3-star with this push, but we're gonna set up another Viking in the back once the opportunity arrives. So. We actually have a opportunity already, so we're gonna be playing Twins in the back, supported by the Viking, and I'm gonna try to get a very quick support of Devils, so that uh, we don't die to a Swarm cards. And here we have it, he's gonna be playing the Defensive Cemetery once again, which, yeah, we have forced uh, earlier, earlier in the game, so... He actually doesn't have too much good responses against Viking and stuff, and it was it was beautifully shown here. Even though he had a defensive symmetry, he just wasn't enough. Also, he's gonna get some. Not even. I was about to say he's gonna get some piercing archer value, but he missed a lineup and. Not that it would matter or something, but we're gonna get a very clean win in a game number one right here. Like I said, it's just about putting a lot of units at the bridge, forcing out mistakes, and when they arise, you just come and finish the game off. Let's jump to the game number two. Alright, so we are in the game number two against a player I see the first time in Boom Arena Ladder, his name at a GZ Mercs. I don't know what that means, but he has 75 medals and will open with uh, Digger and Bone Blaster. So that's gonna be the theory we're gonna be playing with. I'm gonna play Piercing Arch and yet again it's too high, so yeah. I'm kinda messing up this Piercing Archer micro recently it's gonna be a bummer i've showed it in the video as well, <laughs> well ha happens for everything honestly i'm gonna use a blitz for these blasters and ghost for this 
for this bomb girl. And with that being said, we have a eh, semi-comfortable position. He has managed to get in some kind of lead, although I think it's just symbolical. As a digger uh, blasters, you want to get more damage in single mana. And here we have our opponent playing poison against our viking, which is, well, interesting to say the least of a move. So we're gonna just apply some pressure, predict his bomb tower, and we do. And right now we're gonna just try to some connections, although he's very tight on defense, so we won't be getting any of that. And he's gonna get like a perfect defense. I'm gonna play a ghost plus blitz to kill a blasters, and right now uh, my opponent probably will suck the ghost and react to a thief, although it's a lot of damage for him. He misses a rolling steel, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but uh, with that being said, he wastes a lot of mana, so we're gonna just play viking in the back and chill for a bit. He's gonna be playing a blasters, which both connect with those insanely good uh, set of rolling steel and yeah right now i believe it's the time for us to attack he's gonna get a huge value out of bomb girl and he actually cleans the defense completely so for the next time it will be better for us to actually play something for these bomb girls because they get a ton of value Right here, I've cleaned them up first, and I believe I have to set up another attack, which will, which we will begin with Viking as always, and then we're gonna clean up uh, Bomb Girls with a Flying Bomb as soon as they appear on the board. Unless he plays it at the bridge, then it won't be a bother doing an attack, so we're gonna absolutely capitalize on that. He will have to play Fonts for that, which we will promptly blitz, and our twins are connecting to the tower, which, yeah, like I've said, I was planning how to break this man when he had a bomb girl on defense, but he used it on offense, so he, pr he pretty much didn't have resources to defend this time. GG well played, he, he played very well before that, so let's jump to the game number 3 of the video. Right, game number 3 of the video will be played against Frost, if I'm pronouncing correctly. He's gonna be a zero medal player who sends us actually nice playback, so at least our, play our opponent will be a bit mannered and I presume he's gonna be playing Super Ape 2.6 from the things I see. He's gonna be playing Explorer, which is fine response and right now I kinda expect him to go in but he's gonna be going in on the lane I didn't expect so that, that's a small surprise for me. I'm gonna be taking a kill on that gunner, very important because 2.6 Super Ape actually has a matchup advantage in this one so I'm gonna have to take any anything that uh, will be given for me, for instance this value on a gunner. And right now I'm gonna try, just try to cancel the cannon so my footman will connect and I succeed at that. That was very smooth, Ghost will just barely not connect and I'm gonna play this very greedy flying bomb. Let's see if he recognizes that and plays uh, for a super eight. and he does. He actually does and scores one hit, so that was a very well played by him. Obviously I shouldn't have played this flying bomb, but against lower rated players I just like to test them out if they are ready and prepared for whatever I send at them. So right now he's gonna play a lot of mana to stop these twins, which will connect either way, so a lot of mana spent for him to not achieve a lot. It's gonna be just a good trade for me, and with that huge of advantage, we are going into double mana. That's actually very comfortable because in double mana, he will be able to uh, 
very easily defend everything we're gonna throw at them. And in the meantime, I'm gonna miss that cannon absolutely, so... That's gonna be a little bummer. I'm gonna be playing the Viking to completely counter this Super Ape with that placement. And that checks out. So right now we're gonna play a Ghost to block his potential to play Cannon. He plays Cannon anyway and actually supports a Cannon with extra very well played out of him. And my twins will be skipping, so he'll have to play another Cannon. And right now I accidentally actually kept a Viking alive. So that was a very huge play for me. I'm gonna be playing right now the Viking to stop the Super Ape completely. You can pull it off any, every time, so you just have to learn the placement. And we're gonna take the win here against hard matchup, but unfortunately Frost didn't play it perfectly. Let's jump to the fourth game. All right. So another opponent of ours will be Amarius, which has zero medals, and we're gonna open against him with a fifth in the back. Meanwhile, he's gonna be pressuring us with a twins. Very standard opening, we're gonna defend it casually with troops. Like I said, if you can get away with playing troops and saving spells and buildings, you're gonna probably in good shape and that's what I'm playing here. It is almost always better to play troops instead of spells or buildings because troops force your opponent to actually respond to your play instead of just ignore it and that was a very unfortunate <laughs> that was very unfortunate thief. I expected it to go for a, a twins so I kinda had to now spend a flying bomb. There was no option for me to salvage that play as efficiently as that so that's gonna be a bummer because i didn't anticipate it a defense to go that horribly i'm gonna get a block against this feat which is pretty important and right now we're gonna we're gonna play twins to hide this digger also i'm gonna get a twins in front of piercing archer but it got pushed before Twins crossed the bridge, so that, that's a bummer, and right now he's gonna be forced to play a flying bomb, but it's, but it's not the same situation, my flying bomb was kinda an emergency and I still kept a tower alive, while he just wasted 4 mana to kill 1 footman pretty much, so it's very important to just know your deck and how to play with it, because for instance, that was a very suboptimal play of his. And uh, since our Viking is just encroaching the enemy position and yeah, our opponent has given up, we're gonna just play some bridge slam cards and finish out his Viking tower. Okay, without further ado, let's jump to the fifth and final game of the video. And the fifth and the final game of the video hopefully will be against 24 medal player Kraves Kiko is gonna be opening with it looks like it looks like he's gonna be playing steel bait so only exception I'm fighting right now is gonna be these bullets and these mirror bullets so he's gonna be first of all very aggressive with his spells and second of all he's gonna be having a different type of spells than I'm usually used to seeing so I believe his deck is just a steel bait, but he incorporated bullets into places of ice tiny and uh, and uh, steel. While the T-Rex, which we have seen just now, will be uh, a card that has substituted a uh, bomb girl. So. That's a very interesting steel bait right here. We're gonna try to get advantage as fast as possible and we won't get a 3 star with this push. Well, that's very unfortunate. Our opponent Kraves Kiko is stalling for a good while. We're gonna have to bring a heavy cannon because with this kind of spammy play he cannot stop a Viking. So yeah, we are 
we're gonna have to hold one more barrel, I presume. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be playing right now for tricks, which is which is not good against more experienced players because I can see through them. He's gonna actually get a very good damage, but I'm gonna get some damage in return with that twins. He's gonna be actually having a very good time. I'm actually surprised how well he's dealing. He's uh, he's achieving well with this very spammy way of playing. He's gonna be throwing another barrel. That was anticipated. We're gonna see if our tower actually survives. I don't mind it dying. He's gonna be using a lot of mana for it to die. I'm gonna actually lose a lose a tower and a ghost, which it kinda sucks, but I'm gonna stay, uh, still take the dot. Right now he pretty much cannot even stop it with double bullets. And yeah, that's gonna be the last game. That's gonna be the final game for, for 3500 medals. And it's gonna be uh, getting done by Viking Bridge Spam. Very classic deck, very, I would say, low, uh, low uh, skill deck to pick up, but very high skill to master. Like, there are so many interactions you can actually discover in this very basic deck, and also you can just make some substitutions. So, for instance, I can tell Gunner can fit instead of uh, Devils, there can be Necromancer. Obviously, you can switch Piercing Archer, but I really like it in here. Uh, some bridge spam uh, variants just prefer Super Devil because it has better survival survivability than Devils. I obviously uh, prefer Devils in this variant because they are just faster and way more aggressive. You can obviously play some cycle card to cycle to your bridge spam cards faster. Uh, sky's the limit, but th that's the baseline. Obviously, there's a poison. I said why I prefer flying bomb, and I think that's gonna be it for today, guys. With this Viking bridge spam deck. Very thanks for watching. Like always, let me down in the comment if you enjoy this content and what else you want to see on my channel. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye bye.